present the presentation now. And when I present, I can't see all you guys, so um, I'm just I'll just pretend like I'm watching seeing all of you at the same time. All right. So Landmark Academy, we were founded about, um, this is going on our 14th year in the reunion community. We do have a sister school in Brighton called Foundations. Um, and then we have another school down south in Colorado Springs. It's called Mountain View. They opened this year. This was their first year. I helped open that school as well. Um, I also have been um, employed to open a new school in the 27J district called Capstone. Some of you have maybe have already heard of that. The plan was to go ahead and open for next fall and be in open enrollment for Capstone as well. The plot of land for that school is on 88th and Tower Road, um, just so not just too far from Landmark, but they have decided to um, put things on hold for this year. So the open enrollment is not open for Capstone, but hopefully we'll get going with that come um, later on in this year in August. So, but it will open just not for next fall. I know they have plans to build another NHA school out in Bennett. Um, I believe that one's called Sky Ranch Academy, and I'm not sure when that'll be open, probably another two years down the road, but then um, they, the district also has plans for maybe another NHA school, so maybe a total of five and 27J come um, maybe out west, um, somewhere out west, but so exciting things happening with NHA, and we're just excited that the district um, loves having NHA a part of, a part of them. Right now, um, a little background on National Heritage Academies. I love their acrom acronyms. So like Enrollment Information Meeting, EIMs, NHA. So NHA is our charter company that we are umbrella under. They um, manage K through eighth grade charter public schools mostly, but they recently acquired a high school division called PrepNet. So they are expanding in the high school era, which is super exciting. And um, I hope that comes to Colorado. So right now they have over 91 schools in the U.S. US, um, over nine states, mostly in the Michigan, Detroit, inner city areas in um, Ohio, Louisiana, South Carolina, and New York. Landmark is um, open to all free public charter school. Uh, we are in school five days a week. So 27J in public schools, they do not go to school on Mondays. We do. We are a five day a week school, Monday through Friday, tuition free, full day kindergarten. And then um, we do follow 27J for inclement weather decisions. So if there's, well, snow days really don't exist anymore because kids still do virtual learning even on snow days. But if there were anything inclement weather, the district decide to not be in session, we would follow that as well. And we do have special education services at Landmark. We have support for, for um, ELL learners and um, follow all the um, state and federal guidelines when it comes to a public institution. Our main foundation um, and our four main pillars that we are built on through NHA are academic excellence, moral focus, student responsibility, and parental partnerships. Those are four main pillars that we stand on as a school. Um, we focus on your child's unique abilities. Indi we have individual learning plans which are tracked, whether that's doing interims or um, different types of testing through Dibbles, um, reading assessments, things of that sort throughout the year, throughout the quarter, throughout the semesters. Um, they're all logged and all tracked for each kid individually. And then their instruction is adopted on each individual, each personal individual and what their level of learning is, which is super important to me um, as a parent as well is knowing that um, if they're at level, they're teaching to be above level. If they are at above level reading or in math, and I'll get into this later on another slide, but there are advanced opportunities for learning as well, such as high math and high, um, and high English classes. Um, and some of this stuff in this presentation, I'm, I'm trying to kind of let you guys know how it would be in, an, in a, what we call a normal time as well. So these are some of the things that we did offer as far as enrichment goes. So um, 
Spanish club, art club, green team, our tech club. In middle school, we have National Junior Honor Society and Student Council. Those two in middle school are actually still currently going. Um, but the kids did have, you could start sports um, in sixth grade in middle school. And the sports we do offer is volleyball, basketball, and soccer. And then band and orchestra was also offered to our, to our scholars starting in fourth grade. And that would be a before um, or after school. All these clubs and different type of enrichment activities would be a before or after school um, type of club. Um, the main enrichment part of, of Landmark, which we do offer full in school is art, music, PE, and technology. So all of those are options for kids on a daily basis. Um, how they kind of operate is say your kindergartner had um, PE for the first quarter of the year. So those first, what, six or eight weeks of the school year, they would go to PE every single day for the entire first quarter. And then the next quarter, they would switch to, let's say, technology. So they would go to technology every single day for the entire second quarter, and then so on and so forth for um, music and art. Our art teacher, Ms. Kenna, does a wonderful job of hanging up all age groups artwork throughout the school and making murals and beautiful bulletin boards. And you'll see some of that in the little virtual tour that I'll present here after this presentation. But um, she she's an amazing, she's af actually offering in-home art lessons slash parties on the side, being that we can't really do that in school right now. So she's doing that for in-home small groups um, for just a really small nominal, nominal fee. Our music teacher, Mr. Stevenson, in a normal year um, ran a school musical or play, which um, all age groups of kids can try out for, um, which starts in the fall. And then they do that that musical and show that probably on um, through a weekend's time, like an opening night Friday and, and um, show that through Sunday in the springtime, usually in March. Um, our technology teacher, Mr. Ellis, has done an amazing job helping with everything technology in this virtual world, even last spring with getting Chromebooks to kids. The, the, um, we are one-to-one -one technology, so every student in Landmark, virtual or in-person, um, has a Chromebook issued to them. So that's a super cool thing that they fast-tracked for, for this school year. Um, and then our PE teacher, Mr. Hill, is also our athletic director, so he helps run, and he actually helps coach um, one of the soccer teams as well, but he helps run all those extracurricular um, sports things on this side too. Um, our, music, our technology teacher, Mr. Ellis, is also our orchestra teacher if we were to have that at school. So all amazing people and um, we love to highlight them because without sports, those things are super special right now. Um, we uh, here at Landmark, um, from the start of kindergarten, and still the, the goal of college, college is the ultimate goal. And um, they believe high achievement equals high growth. And like I mentioned er earlier with that personalized learning, um, systematic intervention is going on in the classroom on a daily basis. Um, and that just means kind of some small group, group work at all age levels. And then that advanced opportunity of high math and high English classes that will help prepare them for advanced classes in high school and then through college. So our little kindergartners get um, a new shirt every year on the back of them. It says college bound. So that's instilled in our kiddos from day one. And our teachers are, um, super highly qualified. They go through an extensive um, process with interviewing and keeping up on professional development once their career starts with Landmark and NHA. Um, the learning begins by building that relationship with our, with our kids and understanding each child's needs. And just that partnering between uh, mainly your child and then with their, with their with their parents and with our parents as well. And one cool thing, you know, being a K through eighth grade school and what um, really kind of sealed the deal for us, for my personal family applying to Landmark was knowing that I wouldn't have, we wouldn't have to go to another school for middle school. So being a K through eighth grade school, keeping those kids in the same building, um, like it says here, prevents the learning loss that can often occur in a transition from elementary to middle school. You know, switching from a grade school to a bigger middle school 
especially at that age group, can, can be a, a transitional time. And then knowing that they're staying at Landmark, staying in the middle school, knowing what's expected of them, have been in those surroundings before, has seen faces, been around those peers and those teachers and seen those teachers' faces and and just know what is, um, what's kind of to come and it can help with that transition at that age group being, you know, my daughter's going to be in sixth grade next year. And I already feel a little bit more at ease knowing that um, she is, is, going to take that bridge and made that much easier on her, especially at that age. Um, and like I said um, in the last slide, very certified, highly qualified teachers, the intense interview process that they go through to be hired with Landmark, and then the ongoing professional development that is required for all teachers at the school. I know recently, um, we just had Parent Teacher Conference Week last week, but we have another professional development day coming up. They had one last week as well, but we have an an external um, writing specialist that comes in and does um, writing lessons and professional development with every level of, um, of, of every age group with all of our teachers. That's just one of them. And then our deans. So besides our principal, his name is Mr. Collins, we have um, three deans. Um, Tamara Levitt is our K through second grade dean. Libby Rao is our third through fifth grade dean. And Matt Sanders is our middle school dean. And I'll list their information on, on one of the last slides coming up. But um, they are there to help support our teachers. They are, help their, they are there to help with um, any extracurriculum for any accelerated learners and vice versa. So helping maybe our lower level learners um, have specific curriculum for them to become at level learners. So they're there mainly for our teacher support and then helping all of our students meet the needs of, of their um, learning career. And one of our main pillars, like mentioned before, is moral focus. So I love this part of um, Landmark and NHA as well, of, of many things, but um, moral focus is um, a super important part that we as parents try to instill in our kids um, every day and all, all the time of having manners and um, being kind and courageous and having um, perseverance at different times through our lives. But moral focus in its school is being taught on a daily basis at Landmark. So there is a um, curriculum that is given with workbooks and projects, and it's even incorporated in different lessons, even in math and social studies. So we hold moral focus assemblies twice a month. Right now, they're virtual. Um, they're every other Friday. There are moral focus awards given out to those scholars who are being exemplary in that moral focus virtue of the month. So every month the virtue does change. Um, I believe in February it's courage. So there's lessons and projects and writing assignments on um, and curriculum taught over courage. And it depends on the grade level too. So maybe in kindergarten, the lessons and moral focus are a little bit more simpler. When you get to middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, those lessons for moral focus are more are more in depth and more um, intuitive as far as um, what that moral focus lesson means. So I love that it's full circle. They're getting some. They're getting some of that at school, um, and it's the same things we as parents teach our kids at home. Another part of a moral program, I guess you would call it, is completely independent from NHA that we have adopted. I think we're in our third full year of being a part of the Leader and Me program. Um, it's based off of Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders. I know maybe some of you have read his um, his books in regards to this program, but he adopt, he made an inner school um, program called Leader and Me, and it's the Seven Habits of Highly Effective Students. So it goes through all seven habits, and there's there's um, curriculum and, and workbooks and lesson plans around Leader and Me as well. A lot of our teachers, bulletin boards outside their classrooms incorporate, um, they'll hang a writing project or, or something that the, the students have done on their bulletin board that was incorporated with Leader and Me. The habit they're um, focusing right now is Synergize, and that is taught K through eight. So the Leader in Me is part is a school-wide program and a good partner to our moral focus. 
Um, at the beginning of the year, the expectations for behaviors are made very consistent and clear. We do that by having a commitment to excellence, excellence contract that is given to every student within the first week of tour school. Um, they bring it home, they go over it with their parents, and um, the kids do have to sign it, the parents sign it, and then it's given back to the teacher to keep on file for the year, and they sign it as well. So this is just all of us adults supporting all of our students and their success. And a parental partnership. Um, we want to stay connected with all of our parents. One of those ways that we can do that is logging um, into our parent portal, which after the lottery has happened and you've been accepted, um, or actually I think once you put in an application or after lottery happens, everybody has access to parent portal, which is via our school website on landmarkacademy.org. So right in the right hand upper corner is where the login, you would log in. This is where you can see grades, attendance, um, um, any forms. So starting as, as of last year, because of the um, virtual aspect of everything and not being able to come to the school, every form for your um, registration once you were to be accepted at Landmark can be done via our parent portal. Absolutely everything. Even documents such as um, birth certificate and shop records and proof of residency. You can actually upload all of those via a PDF on the parent portal. So it's, they've made that super easy and super accessible for um, our families to access. Um, and we also do weekly emails, um, monthly emails from deans, and um, we put out a weekly newsletter, a school-wide newsletter. It's called The Lead at Landmark, but your teachers actually do send a weekly email as well that kind of goes over what the kids have been learning in for that day or that week anyways, and what's upcoming, anything important or pressing that they would need to know about, and, and so on and so forth. So they do do weekly emails, and then anything pressing that needs to go out from our principal he will send out via a school messenger, um, whether it's like the weather delays or, or stu something super important that needs to go out immediately. Um, he will send those out um, when needed. Volunteer opportunities. So that's a form on the parent portal as well. But we um, unfortunately can't have not been able to do uh, field trips this year either. But that would be a major part in our parents wanting to be involved in the school is being a part of our field trips. We did have um, copy moms, copy dads. We have a media slash library in at the school. And I knew we had a, some of our students and a couple grandparents come in and volunteer their time in the library. So it's something that your, the, your child's teacher will um, ask of you or, or put out there, I guess, at the beginning of the year saying, hey, you know, um, I we would love our volunteers if you have time to come in during reading centers or math centers, especially with our little ones. That is always encouraged when we are able to do that. So please know there are those opportunities um, at Landmark. And our security of our school. So um, this year we have four entries and four, well, technically five exits, um, five entries, five exits for the school. In the mornings, we have our kid kiddos enter through their wing doors and not the front door. So the front door does remain locked 100% of the time, um, except at dismissal where we have our kiddos who come through our car line, our drive line, they come out the front doors. Everybody else leaves through their individual wing doors. So we have um, two on the south side and two on the north side of the school. So depending on where your cl class classroom is located, those are the doors that you would enter and exit through um, each morning and afternoon. So masks are required um, all day, every day as of right now. And the teachers and staff have done a great job on um, keeping space between kids. We have cohorts with, with switching, not kids not switching classrooms for different subjects. Everybody has stayed in the same group. Um, the kids fifth grade through eighth grade do switch um, classrooms, but their groups are never split up. Um, so, and desks has been spread apart um, and temperatures are taken every morning upon entry as well. And we do run all of the regular safety drills, um, lockdown, lockouts, tornado, fires on a regular on a regular basis. And so in the virtual tour that I'll show here in a minute, 
um, you can kind of see in our office where we do have our visitor management system to where um, if you were to be able to enter the school, you would scan your ID for the first time. It goes through a background check in our Raptor system, and then you are able to be in at the school and sign in using our kiosk when that becomes available um, at a later date. Um, our Landmark Academy Foundation, which is our nonprofit program organization that we have at the school, you can kind of compare that to a PTA or a PTO, what we call it Landmark Academy Foundation. Their website is lafpride.com. Um, we have a couple members, in particular our president and vice president, who are resigning at the end of this year. So any of you new parents that um, are interested in being a part of LAF, I highly encourage you to reach out via their website. Um, they do fun things with um, teacher appreciation week, set that up. They set up our fundraisers for the year. They'll do fun events like donuts with dads and muffins with mom. We've had family game nights. Um, we've had bingo nights. They've done daddy daughter dances, fall festivals, trunk or treats. So I know that kind of sounds like a lot, but they do space it out um, throughout the year. The, we only do two fundraisers for the year. Um, we do little things like spirit nights in the community, like, say, uh, coming up actually next week on the 23rd, if you go to G's Tacos here in Commerce City off 104th, and say you're with Landmark, 20% of your bill goes towards Landmark. So those are kind of the little ones that they do throughout the year, like the Old Chicago and um, Chick-fil-A and Dion's and Chipotle and Texas Roadhouse or some of those restaurants that we do spirit nights at. But the two big ones that we have are um, our Apex Fun Run and then our annual Lynx Classic Golf Tournament at Buffalo Run. So our goal for their year, or their goal for the year is I think around $50,000 for funds raised. The fun run usually brings in around 20 to 25, so about half of that. And the golf tournament can range anywhere between 10 to 15,000. I think the max one year we had from the golf tournament was 17,000. So those are the two big ones that we do for the year. And um, if you want a way to, to be able to volunteer and you're not able to be in at the school, uh, laugh is a good place to be for that. Um, here is our staff information. So if you guys want to write any of this down, just to know the names, um, Mike Collins is our principal, Miss Levitt, our K2 Dean, uh, Miss Rao is for 3-5 Dean, and then Mr. Sanders is our middle school Dean. Jennifer Jones, um, we call her JJ. She is our registrar. So she's, um, you may have our, you may have received an email from her actually today, kind of giving you your first taste and information on lottery. Um, so she's our registrar. She will handle the enrollment process, the lottery, the paperwork, that side of things of you being accepted. I'm her um, right hand girl when it comes to reaching out to you, contacting you, making sure you um, I'm answering all your questions when it comes to an enrollment and paperwork and things of that sort. So she gets um, pretty busy with those types of things when it comes to the full enrollment process. And I'm there to back her up and make sure um, whatever you guys need um, to get yourselves registered, I can help you with that. Hannah Myers is our office administrator. She's our main other office um, gal who handles all of our attendance and um, extra office tasks, things of that sort. They both, her and JJ, stay both really busy all day long. They also are certified as our school nurses as well. So any help in administering any types of medications um, of, of, of all sorts, because we have all, all kinds of different medications that are administered on a daily basis, they're certified in all of that as well. And then my information is down there at the bottom. Um, I'm easily reachable over email. So if you need to contact me, that's the best way at sjohnson2 at nhaschools.com. And then our office number is on there too. Okay, so if you haven't already applied, very simple. It's a simple application on landmarkacademy.org. It's an orange tab that says apply now. Um, and then you just need to choose the year that you're applying for. So right now it would be 20, um, year 21, 22. And our open enrollment actually lasts from when the first day of school starts through the last business day of February. So open enrollment started um, 
like August 11th, I think is when we started school that this, this past year. So you're able to apply for that next fall for that next school year, as soon as the first day of school happens. Um, and then goes through last business day of February. And then in March, so this year on March 10th, we will be holding a lottery. And a lottery just means that if we have more applications in a grade level than seats available. Um, so in kindergarten, for instance, we have, which is where everybody starts since where we have our most applications. Kindergarten, we have 75 spots, which is three classes of 25 kids each. Um, and so we will pull 75 total spots for kindergarten. And then after those 75 spots are full, we continue to pull randomly, uh, is computer generated and for a wait list. Um, like it says, everyone's classes are full, the lottery continues to make a wait list. All the applicants who are accepted at lottery, we will be notifying you within a couple of days of your acceptance. Um, JJ will be sending out an email. I most of them more than likely will be making phone calls to make sure you've checked your email, that you know that you've been accepted. If you don't hear from us, then that just means you're more than like most likely um, we're placed on a wait list. But so if it's been about a week or so and you haven't heard anything or seen an email come through, you're more than welcome to reach out to me or call the school and we can give you the status of, of um, after lottery. So I know a lot of questions um, are going to go into kind of that last slide. So I am going to. Okay, and we're back. So um, there's a presentation. I'm going to show, or I'm going to check the chat box real quick, actually. Um, no, Antoinette, the application that you filled out online is very, very simple. It only does, it really does take you only five minutes, and um, there is nothing else to do until lottery. So I'm going to show the quick tour real quick, you guys, and then we'll open it up for a Q&A. Let me just present. All right, I did post the link to our YouTube channel um, in the comment box towards the top. If you guys want to click on that and subscribe to that after the meeting, I highly recommend you do so. This is kind of what it looks like, uh, or this is what it looks like, actually. So under the home page, we do have our... Hi, I'm Mike Collins, principal here at the Landmark Academy. Please Mr. Collins, this is, um, the, that's a good introduction of Mr. Collins and our deans, if you guys want to check that out not as um, extensive as the one I'm going to show you, but they do a really good job on um, um, other key information things. So that's a good one to check out. For other videos, I have a couple of our moral focus assemblies on here. We've done a couple live videos and live chats as well. So those are kind of cool things to check out. Um, and so I'll go ahead and play our tour. My name is Shondell Johnson, and thank you for your interest in Landmark Academy at Reunion. I am the admissions representative here at Landmark. Come join me on a tour of the school. So this is our video monitoring system that every visitor who comes to the school does have to um, initiate this doorbell. And then once we are inside, um, we'll scan your driver's license for your first initial visit. And then after that, you will use our sign-in kiosk. Sign in, you will hand your identification to our secretary. Every sign in after that, you will be able to use our kiosk. 
all elementary K through fifth grade classrooms do look the same. They all have a library corner, a teacher corner, as well as individual cubbies with hooks for everyone's belongings. This is our gymnasium. It also serves dual purpose as our cafeteria, and we also hold moral focus assemblies during the month of here as well. is considered sixth through eighth grade. They do have their own separate wing and they also switch classes for every period. This is a really great playground space that we do have. It has evolved throughout the years in part to fundraising efforts from our families. Thank you for checking out Landmark with me today. If you have any questions, please reach out to me or the school directly. And make sure to visit our website, landmarkacademy.org, where you can apply and stay up to date on current events. Thank you. All right, so there's a little embarrassing watching myself again on a tour, but um, that's just a little bit um, glimpse of the inside of Landmark. I have done some virtual tours with family too, so if you wanted to um, let me know that or or um, I'm happy to do that over a Google Meet like this or over a FaceTime or, or whatever avenue was best for you guys, I have been doing a lot of those. So if you want to um, do that, I'm welcome to that as well. Um, so as of right now, and I do want to mention that that tour was made exactly a year ago. So the desks and stuff don't look like that. They're spaced and um, the lunch, the kids eat lunch in their classrooms this year and the specials. So like the art and music and technology, the teachers are actually coming into the classroom. So the kids aren't going to the art room or to the tech lab and sharing all of the room space. So. Um, PE is still done in the gymnasium, but there's space for that. And if it's a nice day, they go outside and so on and so forth. So um, I'm going to go through the chat box first, and then um, I'll let you guys chime in on the, if anybody wants to speak up and ask a question, I'm welcome to that too. So um, first question is, what if you have multiple children in different grades? How does one water is each one lottery is each one lottery se separate? So um, obviously, it's all separate applications per those grade levels and per, per for those kids. If um, the order of which kids are pulled in lottery is random as well, so it doesn't just start with kindergarten and then do first grade and second grade. It could start with sixth grade and then go down to second grade and so and so on and so forth. So the, the order is completely random. If let's say you have a first grader and the first grader gets accepted and then your you have a third grader and the third grader gets placed on the wait list. Um, it kind of depends per grade on each grade level how many spots are actually available per grade level. And that just is based on who's going to be re-enrolling for next year. So in kindergarten, um, like I mentioned earlier, there's 75 spots just because that's everybody leaves um, and that's what opens up. So in first grade, if everybody comes back, there's and 75 kids go on to first grade, um, all other grade levels, first through eighth grade, we cap our class sizes at 29. So technically, depending on, um, so in first grade, there could be, so 75, um, so you take 29 per class, you're looking at 87, so 12 spots. So first grade, there um, will be 12 spots available for first grade. So right now for first grade, for whatever reason, we have almost 50 applications for first grade. So we'll randomly pull for 12 spots and then everybody else um, for on um, first grade would be randomly put on the wait list. And, um, and that just depends on 
what our records are come lottery, how many spots we'll be able to pull from lottery for those different age groups. If one sibling gets accepted and like the other sibling doesn't and they get put on the wait list, they do have sibling preference. So if they get accepted in kindergarten or in first grade and then your third grader, the sibling, will have sibling preference. If there's no spots, then they're basically at the top of the wait list. Um, so there is, if you have a current child that's enrolled at Landmark right now, they, um, anybody incoming, so if you have an incoming kindergarten starting, starting at Landmark, they would get sibling preference. With kindergarten, we normally see, um, usually there's about half that are siblings that will get sibling preference. And then the next preference after sibling is in district preference, so within 27J um, boundaries. And then after that is out of district. Um, I hope that answers your question, Heather. Um, how many kindergarten applications do you currently have? As of today, we, I believe it's at 112. It was 112 this morning. So we will definitely have a wait list for kindergarten. And I believe almost 40 of those are, I think 36 of those, so almost like right at half are siblings. Um, are there processes in place for separation of eighth grade and kindergarten, for instance? Yes. Thank you for asking. Um, Landmark is laid out like a big H. So there's, um, when you go through the front doors, there's a big main hallway. It splits in the middle. And then the back has another big main hallway. And all the classrooms are all the same size. They're all very cookie cutter. They all look the same. Um, eighth grade is on the southeast side. Middle school is all on the, I'm sorry, northeast side of the school, northeast corner. Kindergarten is on the southwest corner. So they are on exact opposite sides. Their schedules are completely different. Um, the younger kids go to lunch first at 11 o'clock. The middle school kids are at lunch, you know, um, an hour to an hour and a half later. They're never on the playground at the same time. They literally do not ever see each other. My third grader and my fifth grader are only like three classrooms apart and they never run into each other. Um, they stay very separate. And the only case that you would ever have an older um, student in a younger person's classroom is um, not this year, but last year and before, our um, middle school students would volunteer their time in the afternoons and be reading tutors or do a, they'd have reading buddies. Um, one of the electives for middle schoolers was actually being a teacher's aide. So they could apply instead of doing art or music, they could apply to be a TA in the classroom. Um, we um, aren't doing that this year for TAs because of kids entering different classrooms. Um, but that's the only instance you would see any of our older kids in and around any of our younger kids, which refer, and if they are, it's for positive things. Um, next question, how many spots available for seventh grade and what if you were on the wait list from last year? So if you are currently on the wait list right now for this current school year, 2021, you will still have to reapply and put in a separate, a separate application for next year. Um, we are no longer accepting any more eighth graders off the wait list because it's kind of why start a new school just to leave two months later. So um, no longer accepting any eighth graders right now, but we are still contacting families that are on kindergarten through seventh grade wait list if a spot does become available. And then once you're in, you're in. So once you've become accepted and enrolled, you do not have to go through this process again. Um, but in your question, um, Audrina, Thedia, I can't tell you right now exactly how many spots will be available for seventh grade. I know all grade levels right now do have a wait list currently, and it looks like based on the applications for next year, every grade level will have a wait list as well. So that's a very um, specific question that I, if you email me, I can maybe try to answer you better on that one. Um, in the note, uh, Ms. Hansen, that you said you got today mentioning verif verifying your information that said you will receive it in the mail. 
I think that's in regards to your lottery number. So this is another important point. Um, so last year, the NHA started this. Instead of us reading names at lottery, they started doing numbers. And this is just to um, keep up with privacy laws and those and those types of issues. So you all will, if you have applied by the end of February and being included in our lottery, you all will be receiving a letter that has your lottery number on it. That is very important because that lets you know um, if you're going to be, we are going to be streaming the lottery via um, YouTube Live on March 10th. So we um, won't be reading names, it'll be numbers. So if you guys tap into and watch that, um, that that's how you'll know. So when you call the school and ask, hey, I wanna know if I was accepted or waitlisted or whatnot, um, we need to have that number. So just make sure you guys hold on to that, it's super important. Um, I Those numbers have not even been mailed out yet and they won't be mailed out to the first week in March. So after open enrollment ends, which is February 26th, next Friday, then those letters will be going out first thing on Monday. So you won't really get those um, letters until probably a week before lottery. Um, if yes, if you don't get your letter for your number before March 10th, you can definitely call us and I believe JJ will be able to give you that answer on what your number is. And we'll be giving out more. I'll be sending out an email um, with the YouTube link to all of our applied families um, come closer to lottery. And JJ, Jennifer Jones, will be sending out um, more information um, when it gets closer to lottery time as well. Um, how many children are typically waitlisted for kindergarten? It, de it depends. Um, right now, there's over 60 still for this current year on the wait list. Uh, we've been seeing a late trend in applications, especially through um, this COVID era. And I think people are just kind of waiting it out. I think the ones that you guys that have already applied have the best foot in the door. Um, because anybody that applies after open enrollment ends will automatically be placed on the bottom of the wait list. So you guys already have the upper hand when it comes to already being um, it applied if you are. If you're not, I highly encourage you to apply before open enrollment ends. That way you at least have the best, the best chance possible. Um, and everybody's in the same boat, you guys. So whether you applied back in August or you apply next Friday at 3 p.m., everybody is in the same bowl. So that's as long as you're in by then, it doesn't matter actually when you applied. Um, you're all in a big, all in the big random mixing bowl for a lottery. Um, will you know or accepted? How will you know? So um, you guys, I mentioned this earlier, but JJ will be sending out an email literally a couple business or, or lotteries on a Wednesday, that next day she'll probably start her email. So you may know by the weekend, by March 12th, if not for sure that following Monday, whether it's me calling you or her sending an email or both. So you'll know within a couple days. And when should you anticipate uh, letters or emails? So it depends on what's going on. I, I just encourage you guys all to keep checking your email, especially now that open enrollment is ending and lotteries, the next important thing on the list. Um, just be aware the different there's different letters and different emails. I know there's once you've been accepted, we do give a two week time limit to complete your registration. Um, if you've done nothing, then we kind of we send out we do send out like a warning letter or a warning email saying, hey, it's been over two weeks and you haven't touched your registration. Are you still interested? And if and if not, then we can move on to the next family and already accept somebody off the wait list. So um, that's kind of how that works. So we're constantly in contact with you. That's mainly my job after a lottery happens is just to kind of roll through wait, wait, wait lists and um, get you guys all registered that we're accepted. Um, how many available spots are there for sixth graders? The Jody, the um, I can't, I don't have access to see that at the moment. But if you want to email me, I can maybe look closer at at that and actually um, let you know how many applications are in there so, thus far. 
Um, what are some of the ways you celebrate diversity and how does equality and inclusion show up in the curriculum? Um, there depends on different types of year too. Like in February, we all know it's Black History Month. There are lessons in the social studies era that are going on around that. Um, as far as equality goes, everybody is equal. Everybody's treated the same. There is diversity in our school for sure. Um, I've actually seen diversity grow as I've been a parent there and as an employee. Um, and if you want to talk about that specifically, Chrissy, um, off, off the meeting, we can do that. I'm definitely willing to have a conversation with you. Just email me and we can discuss more of that um, over the phone as well. But um, inclusion um, is very prominent on with every child, no matter what race or gender they may be. We do have all those areas in at the school. So um, I, I believe it's super diverse. Um, and I've actually seen it be more diverse throughout the years. You know, our community out here in Reunion sometimes can um, not seem that diverse, but we include everybody and we accept everybody. That's how I'll answer that. Um, I uh, prided my daughter to start the first grade next year, but I received an email saying that we have been chosen to apply. I'm a little confused. Okay, Amanda, I'm going to put a star by your name because you may have, there may be a chance you were accepted for this year and, and apparently maybe in kindergarten. I'm not sure, but I'll take a closer look at that and email you tomorrow. Yes, so the day of the lottery, March 10th. If you watch the lottery on our YouTube page, and if you're listening in, or or I don't know if we're gonna be reading the numbers or not because it kind of rolls a little fast. I don't know if there'll be a delay um, with the live stream at all with the com with the computer generator, but um, I, I don't know how JJ wants to work that. She kind of leads the lottery, so. Yes, you will know that day if you're actually watching. Of course, if you're able to see your number pop up, then of course you would know right away. Um, do you have to reapply every year if you are put on the wait list? What is a typical wait time for the wait list? So yeah, let's talk about that. So if you are, like there's several people right now for this current school year that are on a wait list. Yes, we encourage, um, everyone to reapply for that next year and keep doing that process um, hopefully until you were to be accepted. Um, if you are not, and you do not have to go through this process once you are accepted and enrolled. So once you're enrolled and you've been in school, this process does not happen again for you. It only happens if you're brand new or switching. If you were to leave and leave Landmark and go to another school for another year and then want to come back, you have to reapply, you just don't get your spot back. The only time that you'd be able to have your spot, um, we do have something called military preference. So if your family were to move away due to being um, relocated for uh, military reasons, and then you were to move back, we would, we would let you be a part of Landmark. Um, that's the only instance where if you were to leave and come back would be military preference. Um, typical wait time on the wait list, that depends on how many people are on the wait list. So if you're looking at, and it's ever evolving to you guys, it, it um, I don't want a wait list number to scare you. Uh, our, for my oldest, we were wait listed number 27 for kindergarten, and that was for the half day program when we used to have a half day program. Um, we got a call the week before school started that she was accepted. So it took from March to the beginning of August to roll through 27 kids. Um, and that just, dep that just depends on the year. Um, I've, I've seen lately that people just aren't going anywhere. They just don't want to move on. They're, um, especially during a COVID era, they're sticking with what works and what's comfortable. So we haven't had a lot of um, kiddos leave Landmark this year um, as far as like withdrawal or move on. But we... Throughout the summer, throughout the spring, um, 
all year long. It's ever revolving. We're always on it. We're always notified if the spot opens up. Um, we actually, there's actually a program that automatically accepts kids when they know a spot's open. So it's not something we're just like looking for every day. It automatically lets us know. But that is what I do is keeping in contact with all of you who are accepted to make sure, you know, you are still wanting to be a part of, of Landwork come fall, that you, um, that we are engaging with you. Hopefully we'll be able to have some events this summer, maybe some food trucks at the school. Um, we normally do a kindergarten screening where I partner with the kindergarten teachers and do um, a little flower planting, take home your own flower pot, kind of come grow with us event um, with them when that happens. Uh, but uh, we do a lot of things for all of our new families if we are able to. So um, it just it just depends on the year and what's happening and um, the amount of people on our on that particular wait list. But it's um, it's ever evolving, it's ever changing, and we keep close tabs on every wait list and every grade level. Do you know the available spots for fifth grade and how many applications currently have? Um, Heather, I do not have that information. Um, I'll have to ask our registrar in regards to that. So that's another specific type of question that if you want to email me about that, Heather, um, I can let you know. Um, if you are on a wait list for this year, does the effect of the lottery, does it affect the lottery for the next? No, it does not. If you are on a wait list for this year. It does not have anything to do with your application or the lottery for this coming fall. It's completely separate. Completely separate applications, completely separate years. Um, All together, totally different. How many children are put on the wait list per class? When is the last day of notification, last day of, ex of acceptance? Um, well, the last day of open enrollment is next Friday, February 26th. Doesn't mean that's just to be included in the lottery, which gives you the best chance of number one being accepted and number one having a best spot on a wait list if that's how, if that's what happens. Um, any applications that come in after February 26th this year will just automatically um, not be entered into the lottery and will be placed on the at the bottom of that particular grade level wait list um, as a first come first serve basis. And let's see, I guess last day of notification the last day of notification of the last day of acceptance. So you can uh, we don't really have a I guess it's, I don't understand. Stacy, do you are you still on the call? Do you want to talk about what you're kind of asking? I'm sorry, Stacy Fryer. No, okay. Sorry, I'm I'm okay. here. Uh, oh, okay. I was asking actually, what was the last day of notification of being accepted from the lottery or from the wait list? Like if you're getting put on the wait list prior to school starting, what's that last We're day of the We're still accepting kids currently for this year if a spot opens up. So they, we don't stop accepting until probably, I think they do do a cutoff sometime in March because they, they kind of see what is this kid going to gain by switching schools if they're only going to be in school for six weeks. You know, so, um, but that's, that's kind of up to our principal and Jennifer. And usually it's not the same um, every year. I'm not really sure, but I know eighth grade, we, we've already stopped accepting eighth graders. So if there's an eighth grader that applies and gets in, or um, we've already notified all of our wait, our wait listed eighth graders right now that we are no longer accepting anybody for the year. So, um, and I, that just kind of depends on discretionary where that falls. I know mean, when we get towards the springtime and maybe the last month of school, we stop accepting wait list kids. Sorry, Stacey, I don't have a specific date on that, um, but I it's, it's in the spring. It's either the, either the end of April or the beginning of May, usually. Nope, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Does family preference mean those children are automatically in? No. 
family pre or sibling preference does not mean um, those children are automatically in. Um, kindergarten is easier for sibling preference because there's 75 open spots. For um, say all other grade levels where there's, you know, 12 or less, what if there's like say for first grade if there's already a couple of siblings they get top priority and acceptance um and then we're full so those if you have sibling preference you're either going to be accepted depending on how how full the grade level is or you'll be at the top of that particular wait list so it doesn't always guarantee but if it's a kindergartner that's different because there's more spots available Heidi, did that answer your question if you're still on the call? Heidi Miller? <laughs> it did. Thank you. I, okay. I guess I was just trying to get at, so there's really only going to be about 35 spots for kindergartners in the lottery. That's how it's looking like. Yes. That are okay. not. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I can't legally say that, you know, it's, or, you know, like I can't say, oh, all siblings are in. It's just, um, that's what it's shaping out to be. Yes. Um, okay, Miss Latara Bell, I will write your name down and answer you after the meeting because your question is specific. Okay. Um, thank you, Jody. So, anybody else? has a question and wants to chime in on something maybe we haven't covered. And you guys, if something comes up um, in the next few days or a week or, or whatnot, please don't hesitate to email me and ask me. Um, I'm more than happy to help answer any and all of your questions. I know going through this, it can be a lot of information and we've answered a lot of questions and I've talked a lot, but if you um, have anything on the side, please don't hesitate to um, reach out to me where I'm here to help you through go through go through this process. So I'm just really happy. Um, I had so many turn out tonight and um, like I said, reach out to me if you guys wanna do a virtual tour, like something more in depth and close up. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know. And um, yeah, I'll ask one more time to see if anybody has any more questions. There's a little like raise hand at the bottom of your meeting too. If you raise your hand, then you, I know you want to answer a question. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, I appreciate all of you. And let me know if you need anything. I am here for you. We're all here for you. But just let me know. And um, hopefully I'll be able to meet a lot of you in the future. Thanks so much for joining this evening. Have a good night. Any of the three of you that are left have any questions before I end the meeting? Miss Bell, did you have a question? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I was like, I don't know how to get it off. No, I was just thought you were going to respond to me. Are you emailing me? 
Yeah, because you, you're, um, well, you know what? I don't think the other, I don't know if the other two are on the meeting, but um, I can look real quick while I have you. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. So your, uh, is it Jaya? Jaya? Jaya. Mm -hmm. So Jaya is still waitlisted at 17 for seventh, for, um, seventh grade. Well, she's in seventh grade now. So if she doesn't, cause I know they had right. me do this year and next year, I believe. Right. So, and then, um, is it Zanaya? Zaniah, correct. Zaniah's number four on the wait list for fifth grade for for right now. This is where you are right now. For right now. So yes. So no, they have not been accepted for right now, and they have not been accepted for next year. That will that piece will come after lottery, depending if you are or not. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you want me to check to make sure I see you in there for next year? Please, because I know she called me and we talked about it over the phone and we put them on yep. the wait list. Yep. We had um, some help in our corporate office in Grand Rapids. They're our marketing associates. They went through all of our wait list people to ask if they wanted to reapply for the next year. So let me just double check. Because more or less, I think that they're still... My kids still go to school in DPS, but they've been online. So. Gotcha. Yep, I see their applications for sixth and eighth grade. Yeah. So, more so like you'll be in the lottery. lottery. Yeah. So you'll be in the lottery here uh, next month. Okay. So we'll just keep waiting it out. Um, I I guess if they accept them, we'll get them in. Um, we'll switch them over this year. If so yep, we'll if you do, yep. Keep waiting. We'll let you know as soon if that happens. I would appreciate it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining. You too. Nice meeting you. All right. You too. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. And we'll stop recording.